didn't get time to memorize my speech, so I'm just going to have you read it. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm going to multitask a little. Done? I'm sorry. Was that too loud? I, I had to do that because I knew if, if I really asked you to read that, you'd probably fall asleep, right? So it's a Les Paul guitar, by the way. You probably, maybe you know that. Um, designed by Les Paul, the Wizard of Waukesha from Waukesha, Wisconsin. Um, he uh, is a chart-topping musician, designer of one of the world's first solid-body guitars, as well as the multi-track recording process that was used on music ever since. Kind of a creative guy. And he just wanted to be louder to amplify his music. One of the most influential artists in music in the 20th century, from just a kid from Waukesha, Wisconsin, not too far from here. Amplify, I like that. What if we could amplify other stuff too, like art, like creativity? It's a resource, and we have a lot of it around here. And people love it. They get passionate about it. It kind of comes from passion, doesn't it? How could we amplify creativity? That's better. Oh, there, we want that one. Well, yeah, that's better than all the words, right? Okay, so it's a little bit like the landscape. Let's take a look at creativity. Let's see how we can amplify it. Amplify creativity. We know it, it takes passion. Um, then we get inspired. And then we create art. It's kind of a circle. Art inspires passion. Passion inspires art. Art and design is really just a process. It's exactly the same creative process, whether you're making paintings or guitars or shoes or even bike trails. It's all prototyping trying things, making them better and better. It's an art, and art is everywhere. That process is found in so many things. We have a lot of creative people around the UP. It's no wonder they like it up here. It's a beautiful place. We love it, and we're passionate about it, so we're in the circle. We get inspired. You can see how this landscape inspires me. This is my art. It's my own little Eden, but it just comes from living up here on the North Coast. Great artists come from up here and they're inspired by this landscape. John Lautner was one. Most of the architecture we live in is a little bit artless. Think about the experience of most buildings. It's like moving through a series of boxes. Most we live, mostly we live in a lot of little cubes. Nothing like the way it would feel to be in one of these paintings or to be in the grand forest that we love so much up here if you think about that, you can see how Lautner put that experience into his art. In Josh White's photos, you can see how Lautner evoked nature in the shapes of his houses and the feel of his spaces. John has been called the most influential architect of the 20th century. He was like the Picasso of houses. Just a kid from Marquette putting his passion for this place into his art. We have a lot of successful creative people up here. This place seems to grow them. Andy Gregg, making furniture out of bike parts. Rich Branstrom, Dave Olala, designing skis. It's all creativity. You might be surprised to hear that Northern Michigan University's single largest department is the School of Art and Design. Well over 700 students there amplifying their creativity. But some schools have cut art to almost nothing, or nothing at all. Some do still have good programs with full-time art teachers, but too many don't. I guess we don't always think art is necessary. It's been going on forever, this battle to keep art in our schools, to keep it from being cut. We question if art is necessary. Yes, art is everywhere. And some of the best things for a community and an economy come from creative thinking. It could be the most important thinking there is, if you think about it. Hey, and we don't question other subjects. Why don't we question math? 
You know, I don't want to offend anybody. Um, I like math, and it can be fun. When I was in fifth grade, a teacher from NMU came to our school to teach college algebra to fifth graders. He had something to prove. <laughs> they selected some of us who were good in math, and we stayed after school and learned college algebra, and he made it fun. But when I really need to do math, I use a computer or a calculator, don't you? But it takes a person to be creative, and art classes teach creativity. And they teach a lot of other things, too. The best mathematicians are the creative ones. Just ask Einstein. We need strong art programs in our schools. Creative thinking is good for everybody in every walk of life. In America, we have three R's. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. The Greeks had three A's. Academics, athletics, and art. And Plato said, education stands on those three legs. Without any of those three, education will fall down. Let's take a look at some school art. Yes, this is school art. This is from Libby Nelson's art class up the hill at Aspen Ridge School. She's a great teacher. She wrote a grant to build a greenhouse. So these kids built this greenhouse. <laughs> and they dug a trench to run power to it. And they're doing all the math and all the science and biology to run it and grow the plants and are going to get creative with it by learning landscape design. Art is everywhere. It's creativity. It's a process. Here's another local artist. Oh, there's the greenhouse. Here's another local artist. This is Mike Brunette. He's a trail designer for the mountain bike trails that attract so many people up here. More creativity inspired by the landscape. The trails are beautiful, and Mike does it for no pay because it's his passion. I've talked to him about it. It's his art. He's sculpting the land and designing an experience inspired from nature, just like Lautner did. The process is the same. Passion, inspiration, and art. It's up to you now. Demand art in your schools. Don't cut it. Amplify it. Let's give our kids something to be passionate about in school. Let them love learning. Give them knowledge and creative thinking. Hey, let's do some math. Passion plus inspiration equals art. Thank you.